have a special treat for you guys today on Community Connections. I have Benita Walasek in the studio. She's dressed up, ready to go, and we're going to talk about a Halloween aid that's coming up at the end of October. So Benita, tell me about it when it is. It's on October 26th, um, which is a Sunday, and it runs from 5 till 9 o'clock in the evening. Alrighty, can you tell me where it's located? Um, it's at my home, 1820 Gaynor Avenue, which is right by the roundabout over by the zoo. Well, let's tell the audience what they're going to see when they come between 5 and 9 on that Sunday, the 26th. Well, we've got our three city lots that our yard is made up of. The front yard is kind of done to the fall Halloween look for children. Um, as you go through the front porch and out into the second yard, we have um, 17 stations in the back with all kinds of characters that are geared more to the younger kids. Um, they give out candy. The people at the stations actually work with the kids and stuff. And then we have another lot which is done up as a huge corn maze, which is where the haunt is. Well, you've been doing this for several years. Uh, great benefit, helps out people within our community. Uh, let's talk about that. Uh, money's been raised all the way up to $10,000, as we spoke about before we uh, got on the show. Let's talk a little bit about the beginning, when it started, and how it began. Well, we started it, we have some good friends, Mike and Doris Laskowski, who their daughter had gotten leukemia. And we just had done Halloween ever since I was 18 years old. And we just decided that year that we were going to put it together and give the money to Lacey, whatever we had made that year, for her to do it with, with whatever she wanted to. Almost five years ago or a little bit over five? Yes, this will be our sixth year that we're doing it. Six years. How many people are you looking to come to an event like this? Well, last year it's grown every single year since we've done it. I was just amazed. Last year we had the best weather you could imagine. Everything couldn't have been more perfect. We had over 1,200 people go through it last year. And um, we, that year we did it for Hadley Barron and we raised $10,000 for her in four hours. Wow, and that really, really helps. What You, you originally said you did this for uh, a Laskowski, right? Her? Yes, for Lacey Laskowski. L Lacey Laskowski. What made you want to continue this tradition? Well, the next year came around, and we were going to be doing Halloween anyway, and um, Lacey's aunt asked us if we would do it for a little girl named Hannah Volcott. She uh, also had cancer and asked if we would do it for her that year. And we said, well, yeah, sure. So we did it that year and that just grew again. Let's talk about the, the next three that you've helped out here in your family as well as many, many community members come here dance and we'll talk about that later in the show. Let's just uh, list uh, the other uh, people that have helped on, uh, that you've helped. Well, the third year we had a lot of people, you know, kind of contact us and say, you know, there's other people in the community that don't have hardships, but they're not cancer people. So instead of changing it from Halloween for cancer, we made it go to Halloween Aid. And we did it for Jason Sulaguski. He was the boy that got burnt in the beer and mill explosion. And we kind of changed it up that year just because of him. I work at the mill and there was a lot of involvement with him because of that. Okay, and then the next one, which was your fourth year, uh, it kept. It was also Halloween aid as, as well. And do you know that person's name? Um, yes, we did it for a little boy named Waylon Villers and he had an inoperable brain tumor. Um, we knew his great grandmother who is Helen Ponchock from the Low Pink restaurant, which everybody knows is a pillar in this community. Um, we contacted her and her daughter and decided we were going to do it for Wayland, and she decided she would like to donate something, so she, we started a bake sale that year. And Helen has done that bake sale ever since. Alrighty, well talking about Helen, uh, 
she's going to have that bake sale. People can buy, and those proceeds help uh, with your your event. Is that right? Go yes. right towards it. All all the bake sale goes to her. Everything that is raised at the event goes to the person that we have it for. So does she start working on that right away? Uh, plan on how much bread and or cookies and stuff does she have? A lot of different things. Well, Helen actually does most of the bread for there and then we have a whole bunch of people from the community that have got together and have volunteered their time and made you know every kind of Halloween cookie or cake or cupcake or anything to do with Halloween and it's all donated to the bake sale okay let's talk a little bit about volunteers uh, this many people coming in need a lot of people you yes. can't do it yourself that's but correct let's uh, let's talk about uh, how you how did you get all these volunteers well, some of them are friends, um, some of them are relatives of the people that we are doing it for. Um, some of them are just people from the drama club up at Lincoln High School, the kids. They come, they have to put community service hours in, so this is a good fun thing for them to do for community service hours and we sign their books for them. Um, yeah, the word gets out from people to people and sooner or later you've got people calling you asking to be in it. and. It just keeps continuing. Keeps growing. Uh, let's talk a little bit about who it's going to benefit this year, the person's name. Um, the little girl we're doing it from this year is a quadriplegic. Her name is Abby Mertz, and um, she is has cerebral palsy. And we are basically doing it for her because she's nine years old now, and it's hard to transport her down to Madison for her medical treatments and stuff and we're going to try to raise enough money to get a van with a lift in it for her to be transported back and forth for her medical treatments. You guys set a goal or uh, just trying to really hope raise uh, money that you can get for the, for her? Well every year we've always tried to beat what we've done last year. So last year we raised ten thousand dollars and that went to Hadley Bear and the little girl that had leukemia and this year we're hoping we'll make more than 10,000. Benita, let's talk about Dance with Pam. It's coming, they're coming as well. It's a pretty neat event. Every year Dance with Pam has been there for us, all five years. They are the entertainment that bring the people in. They are, there's usually between 15 and 20 girls. They're always dressed in zombie costumes and they dance to the famous Michael Jackson's Thriller. Until you've seen them do this, you have no idea how good they are. Benita, you're dressed up as a clown today. It took you a little bit of time to get dressed up and uh, come on over here to the studio. Let's talk a little bit about how you prepare all the people that are involved, the volunteers, the cast, Dance with Pam. How much work does that take? Well, Dance with Pam actually comes and they are all in outfit and makeup up and ready to go. But we've got 38 people that are in this event that come in their costume and we've got five people that do all of their makeup for them. They've been there every year for us also. Um, we, this year we've got, um, we brought in kind of more of the children's characters for the second lot. Um, we've got the famous people from Frozen. We've got Batman, we've got Spider-Man, we've got the Wizard of Oz, we've got um, the women Pocus and uh, the mad scientist. But everything is pretty much geared to the younger children. How do you come up with all these ideas? This wasn't thought of all just in five minutes. You must have been planning earlier this year or right, right after the event last year. Um, I actually have two other people that are Halloween nuts like me, uh, Peggy Jacoby and Paula Peters. Uh, they come up with a lot of really cool ideas and we try to change things up every year and incorporate different things in and this year we thought we should bring in you know like Frozen and more of the things that the kids are into. How are you going to do an Olaf? Are you, is he going to come? Oh yes, Olaf will be there. <laughs> well, everyone yes. loves that show. Uh, yeah. My two daughters can't get enough of it. I'm sure it's the same in most house homes. Yeah. That uh, that's on 15 to 20 times, and uh, but that's neat that you're bringing back these characters, and I think that'll be a great hit for families and the kids to come and see. Yeah, it's a very family orientated thing. Um, it covers the people that like Halloween but don't like the fright 
It covers all the little tykes that want to come and really enjoy Halloween, how it should be. And then it covers the people that like the fright of the night. Uh, the haunted corn maze, until you have gone through it, you have no idea what it's like. It's definitely a fright for life. So you can pick and choose. If the little ones don't want to go through this corn maze, they don't have to. No. No, it takes them quite a while to go through the 17 stations. If you're bringing your children and stuff, you probably have to be there an hour to an hour and a half, so you should dress them warm because each station has something for the kids to do, and each station gives them candy. 17 stations and 17 different volunteers helping out organize this. Any uh, other media come by that night? Oh yes, um, we have a photographer that has come every year, Steve Kramer. He goes around and takes pictures of all different kinds of things. He takes between five and seven hundred pictures. And then we have Dan from Winter Spring Studio. He comes every year and videotapes when it's light out. And then he comes back and he videotapes when it's dark out. And they incorporate together their pictures and what they have filmed into a videotape which is called Halloween Aid. And if you would like to purchase them, you can purchase them from Dan at the studio for $10. You might be in the video and you might not be. Well, here's the video, Halloween Aid Fright for Life. This was last year's. Uh, we've been running it on the station as well in the past few weeks and we'll run it up until the aid uh, here and there. Uh, again, you can purchase it at Winter Spring Studio. Uh, Dan Smith puts this together every year. Loves doing it, I can see oh. that. Absolutely. So we They're both wonderful. really thank him for taking that time and putting that together and uh, those proceeds help uh, the, the, the girl that you guys are donating this money to. Yes. Already. Well, we talked about the corn raise. There's a 50-50 raffle as well. Um, I don't want to miss any other pieces that are going to be happening. Again, five to nine. We don't want to forget about that on October 26th, so it's not Halloween. No, no, it's the Sunday before Halloween. Um, I'd like to talk maybe a little bit about the raffle that we have. Um, every year that has become a really big thing. Last year, um, the guy that won it, his name was Joe Fiddler, which he did donate $1,000 of it back, but half of his 50-50 was $1,500. So we had over $3,000 just in the raffle. Um, a couple years ago, um, when we had it for Wayland, one of his relatives had won it and they donated the whole thing back to him. So it's become a real big thing um, throughout the community. There's people everywhere following up on the raffle. Well, bless your heart for doing this, and it really means a lot to you, doesn't it? To oh, help, yes. these, help these people in the community. Uh, it's a lot of work, but the work isn't, it's not really about the work, it's about helping families and bring fun to families too at the same time. Yes, yes. So you get to have Halloween in your own home. Uh, you love that uh, time of the year. Yes. And uh, help children out. To, it's a great, great way to do something special for your community. Um, you chose your house, that works out pretty good. It's right on the roundabout. And when do you start the decorations? Well, we start working on the event the 1st of September, right after Labor Day. Um, there's a lot to do with it. We don't have a planted corn maze. We have to go out and pick the corn, bring it and make the corn maze. Everything we do, we have to transform our yard into being that. And it gets kind of hectic and you go, okay, now just take it day by day here, you know. But the day that the event comes is like, it's, you can't even explain it. It is just so awesome. Everybody enjoys it. Everybody comes and they don't have to worry about where their kids are trick-or-treating or, or what they're going to get in their candy bags. It's, you know, the whole community really is involved in it. And <coughs> Excuse me. Last year, um, someone nominated us to the Chamber of Commerce, and we got an award for doing this from the community, from all the people that you know were involved in it and that enjoy coming. And I mean, that alone was just an honor to receive. Well, four hours of fun, and uh, and it's over. So it's one night. One night. And it's on a Sunday before Halloween. Um, so 
1820 Gainer Avenue. I think most most people know right where that is. They've, Just before the zoo. They've right seen by it. By the roundabout. And uh, usually the house is lit up. Oh yes, you can see it from the roundabout. <laughs> Alrighty. Anything else that you want to add about the Halloween Aid Fright for Life coming up here in a few weeks? Um, I guess just that it's such a family oriented event. I mean, whether you're 85 years old or you're eight years old, there's something for everybody there. And if you just want to get out and enjoy Halloween how it should be and not have to worry about, you know, where you're going or what's going to happen, you know you're safe, you know you're going to have a good time, and it kind of brings Halloween back from the olden days. Well, thank you, Benita, for coming by, sharing that information. Hope a lot of people attend, and you surpass $13,000. Oh, that would be awesome. We would love to do that. Alrighty, thanks again. Thank you.